Good afternoon. Today, you will experience a brief history in poems of the incarceration of Japanese American citizens in the West during the Second World War and the voices of those both inside and outside the camps who bore witness to the tragedies of that time. 75 years ago today, on February 19th, Executive Order 9066 was signed into law. Perhaps the greatest and most revered poet in the history of haiku is Matsuo Basho, 17th century. Bashu penned the following haiku in 1684 upon visiting the grassy plain of Sekigahara, where one of the bloodiest of all Civil War battles in the history of Japan was waged in October 1600. It is arguably the first and also one of the greatest anti-war poems ever written. Summer grasses, all that remains of warlords' imperial dreams. We now begin the reading of the haiku related to the concentration camp experience during the Second World War. Most of them were written between 1942 and 1946 by American citizens rounded up by U.S. military authorities and the FBI after Executive Order 9066 took effect. Over 120,000 American citizens were rounded up, denied all due process, often lost their homes and businesses, and were shipped to transfer sites, fairgrounds, and racetracks. The time has come for my rest. This dark, rainy night, I calm myself and listen to the sound of shoes. Sojin Takei, Sand Island Transfer Camp, Honolulu. I bid farewell to the faces of my sleeping children as I am taken prisoner into the cold night rain. Misan Okazaki, Angel Island Assembly Center, California. A fellow prisoner takes his life with poison. In the evening darkness, streaks of black blood stain the camp road. Keizo Soga, Lordsburg Internment Camp, New Mexico. Lingering summer heat, Japanese proceeding under guard on bleak and dusty road. Kientaro Komoro, Stockton Assembly Center, California. Living morning and night, three months in a racetrack. Watermelon flowers. Ronan Iguchi, Stockton Assembly Center, California. <coughs> Moonlit summer sky, same black barracks standing in a row. Yotenchi Agari, Stockton Assembly Center, California. 9066. Humiliation, locked up, day of infamy. The incarceration the incarceration program got underway immediately after Pearl Harbor. The American military position was summed up by General John DeWitt, Armed Forces Commander of the Continental West Coast. A Jap's a Jap. They're a dangerous element, whether loyal or not. Pointedly, there was no wholesale incarceration of U.S. residents who traced their ancestry to Germany or Italy, America's other enemies. Most Japanese families incarcerated were transferred from one camp to another at least three times in as many years. Some were forcibly moved more often. 
Small patches of untrodden summer grass talk of our transfer. Tojo Fujita, Stockton Assembly Center, California. Again, seeing off transport train, standing deep in snow. Isa Fukuda, Roar War Relocation Camp, Arkansas. Our transfer day nears in the cold city, sandalwood flowers scattering. Honjiyoshi Kunimori, stopped in Assembly Center, California. Two summers, forced to be here. I hold this year's flower seeds in my hand. Kasue Matsuda, Tuli Lake Water Location Center, Northern California. In the shade of summer sun, guard tapping rock with metal club, Shiho Okamoto, Lursburg, and Turbot Powell Camp, New Mexico. Eating and sleeping, nothing to do. Falling snow disappears on cold ground. Shiho Okamoto, Santa Fe Internment Camp, New Mexico. Mourning the death of two sick internees shot to death in Utah, who had just arrived from a camp in Bismarck, North Dakota, the next poem was penned. Centuries allege the two sick Americans were trying to escape from the camp because, being so sick, they could not walk upright into the camp and shirked entering when ordered. In the sagebrush, two new earth mounds, fitful winds blow, Shiho Okamoto, Topaz War Relocation Camp, Utah, in all the camps, the Nisai were always under constant suspicion and questioning. The regime in the camps was penal, with armed guards, barbed wire, poorly constructed wooden barracks, roll call, barren landscapes far from civilization, beset by cold, heat, wind, and dust, and always the lonely isolation. After interrogation, we turned at night in icy rain, hung clothes on nail, Sinbishi Takioka, Roar War Relocation Camp, Arkansas. Day in, day out, my heart perceives nothing. Summer once again, Kazue Matsuda, written while encampment prisoners were on hunger strike, Tule Lake War Relocation Center, Northern California. Even the singing frogs do not soften the bard's wife. This is our life. Okuro Wada, Santa Fe Internment Camp, New Mexico. At daybreak, stars disappear. Where do I discard my dreams? Ailing alongside dying man, we both look at summer marigolds. Neji Ozawa, diagnosed with tuberculosis, Gila River War Relocation Center Hospital, Isolation Ward, Arizona. From far away, heard of friend's illness, sunflower drooping in setting sun, Sadayo Tanaguchi, Gila River War Relocation Camp, Arizona. By the end of 1943 into 1944, Japanese men in the camps between the ages of 21 and 35 were allowed to enlist in the U.S. military to fight in the European and African theaters of war. Many signed up just to get out of the dreary camps as many again because they remain U.S. patriots, even though incarcerated. 
Their patriotism as Japanese American soldiers was recognized by President Truman after the war. He said, you not only fought the enemy, but you fought prejudice, and you have won. What they won back home as Japanese Americans was never enunciated by the president. Yet the 442nd Infantry Regiment of American soldiers of Japanese descent was then and remains to this day the most decorated unit in U.S. military history. Son joined the Army. I walked a great distance along in the same book. Death of our young sons, mourning intensely, rain falling, falling. Kate Sakara, Tuli Lake Segregation Center, Northern California. Still no word, yet the days grow shorter. When will winter come? Suiko Masushita, men's in our war relocation center, California, after receiving no word from his son in Europe. <coughs> to begin, they gave us one army blanket and one army cot. No doors on bathroom stalls and no stoves for heat. Only mouthfuls of dust and the sight of a mountain in the bob wire distance where the wind waited like a tired sniper. Bryn Saito, San Francisco. Due to the large number of Japanese Americans detained in Arkansas, the Jerome and Roher concentration camps were for several years almost the largest towns in the state. Both camps were served by the same rail line. But all the camp locations were chosen for their isolation from other American towns and commerce in the harshest of forlorn environments. In many of the camps, husbands and wives were separated, sometimes in different states for the duration of the war. Handcuffed and taken away, I see my husband as if yesterday. Together, separated from husbands all these years, wives' hearts veiled in mist. Sadayo Taniguchi, Gila River War Relocation Camp, Arizona. I'm gazing at the barracks where my wife exists, beyond the barbed wire fence, I pluck and chew the leaves of grass. Neil Green Mori, Santa Fe Internment Camp, New Mexico. On the morning of May 24, 1944, Soichi James Okamoto, an internment construction camp worker at the Thule Camp in Northern California, asked permission to pass through the gate to go work in a nearby quarry when he was fatally shot. The sentry who fired the fateful bullet was later acquitted after being fined a single dollar for, quote, the unauthorized use of government property. The next few haiku remote memorialize Okamoto's needless death. Only the blue summer sky, all the men, Silent. Takuji Hirai, Tule Lake War Relocation Center, Northern California. Dandelion has bloomed our days of bitterness. Of what consequence? Hayaku Ise Okamoto, the deceased uncle, Tule Lake War Relocation Center. Breathing within another victim. Boats scattered on the ground. Shizuku Uemoruko. 
to be late for relocation center. Send off casket, white flower clippings dry, only the sandy wind. Suiko Maso Shiki. Truly Lake, Truly Lake Bar Education Center, Northern California. Throughout these years, as the Second World War raged, misery was global. Here are the voices of others in faraway lands who also suffered. Some of these haiku were written in remembrance after the war. Another brave woman, unknown to me, until the obituary, Anne Delforth, Liverpool, United Kingdom, The Blitz. Carrying their homes in their eyes, Refugees, Hassan Bebek, Yugoslavia, Croatia. After the bombing raid, a lean cat lies by the bunker. Claudia Breffeld, Dusseldorf, Germany. 370,000 city residents died or were left wounded and homeless from the bombing. Autumn Meadow, side by the battlefield. Adrian Mokove, Eastern Poland. Russians were advancing westward with brutal determination. After a starless night, corpses in the street, winter dawn. Mark Harris, U.S. Infantry, Meuse, River, Fa Notre Dame, French Belgium border, Battle of the Bulge. Emergency shelter, the baby sleeping in a cardboard box. Peter Janssen, Berlin, week before surrender. Fallen leaves, he hands her the folded flag. Peggy Cobb of her friend Ellen Compton, receiving news of her son's death, Des Moines, Iowa. Cemetery path, with each step I take, a comrade's grave. Mark Miller, Perth, Australia, returning to visit the U.S. Memorial Cemetery, Normandy, France, 12 years after his airborne landing on D-Day. Back in the internment camps, the war, too, wore on. Life was a harsh cycle of difficult weather, imprisoned monotony, small joys, and many sorrows, and a deep sense of foreboding. Distressed by setting sun, one cicada chirps noisily behind the barracks. Isama Taniguchi, Crystal City Internment Camp, Texas. Coiled in my comb, this graying hair, autumn morning, Sadayo Taniguchi, Isami Taniguchi's wife, separated by 500 miles at Gila River Concentration Camp, Arizona. Late on night, no news again. Battlefront or maneuvers, not a word. Takako Tunekawa. Stockton Assembly Center, California. We are silent above the evening window. Empty sky. Kikisame Matsuda, Manzanar War Relocation Center, California. Speaking to a Negro soldier with hand gestures. Between us, briars and barbed wire. Sayoshi Kume, Roar War Relocation Camp, Arkansas. We are hopeful for something this 4th of July. Sayoshi Kume, Stockton Detention Center, California. In 1944, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of the removal of Japanese American citizens 
by ruling against Fred Korematsu's appeal for violating the exclusion order. The court limited its decision to the validity of the exclusion orders, avoiding the issue of the incarceration of U.S. citizens with no due process. The exclusion orders under Executive Order 9066 were rescinded in 1944 after the tides of battle had turned in the Allies' favor. And so, as 1944 drew to a close, with Japan's defeat, defeat imminent, and through the spring of 1946, one by one the concentration camps were disbanded. Yet most of the Japanese who returned to their longed-for homes, where years before they had been rounded up, were shocked to find that often their places of business and their old homes had been taken over by Anglo-Americans for failure that they had paid the taxes on those buildings. Some of the returning families were run off the property of their former homes at gunpoint. But in the days prior, as release from the camps became known, there was nevertheless excitement. Nation at war three years, burdock blooms again by the barbed wire. Will I live to see the other side? Akisame Matsuda, written the day of death Japanese surrender, Rower War Relocation Camp, Arkansas. Solitary bloom of wild sage, day of departure nears. Departure day, families leaving one by one like summer clouds. Where do we go? Yuko Fujikawa, Jerome War Relocation Center, Arkansas. People forced to leave, iris blooming despite the wind. Shona Suzuki, Tuli Lake Internment Camp, Northern California. Life itself was far worse in Japan as 1945 wore on. The Imperial Japanese Army was in tatters. American B-29 bombing had destroyed many cities in Japan. Then came Hiroshima and Nagasaki. News of victorious battle. Again I shuffle along the garden path at this quiet temple. News of disastrous battle. Again I shuffle along the garden path at this quiet temple. Pacifist Zenma, So and Nakagawa after yet another B-29 air raid, Mount Dai, Botsasu Monastery, Japan. All on the ground, hugging their knees, prisoners of war, Senkai Seito at the American Occupational Army Detention Center, Kobe, Japan. A child in a photo. Agent Elder murmurs his name. First Hiroshima Day. Yasuhiko Shigemoto witnessed the incinerated city at the age of 15. Our nation defeated, yet the mountains and rivers remain. I meet the spring of brilliant flowers. Goto Miyoko, Tokyo, Japan. So the war drew to a close, and the world took a deep breath. In the years following the great conflicts in Europe, Africa, and Asia, people everywhere sought to rebuild their lives. The poems that pa follow from around the world celebrate these joys, the sense of human longing and the enduring sorrows of humanity resurgent. The fenced in barracks, 
still stand beyond the ancient carvings of prisoner rock. From legends of the camp, I blossom to sell Inada. Lighting one candle with another, such is love. Busan Yada, Osaka, Japan. Evening calm, I echo the train whistle for a baby smile. Shugyo Tuka, leaving from San Francisco, from Santa Fe relocation camp, Rio Grande, New Mexico. <coughs> Carving fog, the windmill beats the air, smell of fresh bread. Toga Katsuyama, Lieutenant, 442nd Infantry Regiment, Reconstruction Expeditionary Force, the Netherlands. At the time of the twilight of humankind, singing frogs, Matsuo Takahashi, Tokyo, Japan. Atom bomb dome, so many sparrows split among the rusted girders. Tokihiko Yasuma, Hiroshima, Japan. Your smile unlocks my heart, wound tight five years. Now I am a bird singing long into the night. Andre Surridge, Paris, France. An old woman in mourning, yet a daffodil peeps from back. Slimiak Belanka. Yugoslavia, early years of reconstruction. A pair of doves in a mist of spring rain. Soon, a clutch of chicks. Anton Goritz, Belgium. Wing to wing, two butterflies kissing. War burnt wall. Fabrizio Virgili, Anzo, Italy. Back and forth in the swing, a new child for an old tree. Elizabeth Marshall, California. From Poem to Be Back Home by Pablo Neruda, Nobel Laureate Santiago, Chile. My love, we're going home now, where the vines clamber over the trellis. Even before you, the summer will arrive on its honeysuckled feet. In our bedroom, life is always renewed, so we rejoice. Thessaloniki by Mikis Theodorakis, Greek poet, Adolo Sicaria, film composer, and Zorba the Greek. I sow myself in the furrow of the sea on whatever shores, whatever suns. My destiny remains apart from me. I have no boundaries. To whatever suns, whatever winds, comb the hills of my homeland, to the tired brows, to the feeling of the sun, to the deep pain of nature, to the fever behind my eyes, to the bright green flag of humanity, live on. And so our program ends. We are all prisoners of whatever prejudice and hate we harbor towards the world. Today there is talk of rounding up alien Muslims using the 9066 edict as a justification. Each and every one of us is called upon to commit great acts of fearless kindness in this world of ours. We must dare to confront tyranny wherever we see it. This small circle of poems from today is for all of those who lived through or died in the 9066 concentration camps, and to all of humanity who suffered at the hands of oppression then as now. We are so glad you came today. 
Embrace each other in fellowship and farewell. Thank you so much.